Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. And uh, on this video, we're going to look at Lab 8 of the Cisco OpenSDN Controller Hands-On Labs. Uh, specifically, we're going to be uh, working with NetConf. So it should be a, a fairly interesting lab. Okay, and with this lab, what we're going to do is we're going to connect um, some Cisco routers, basically mount them to the OpenSDN controller, and then try to generate automatic APIs. Uh, so there's a, a couple different things that we're going to do just to uh, get a little bit more uh, familiar with NetConf. Um, <clears throat> so first, let's uh, go ahead and get the routers ready uh, to connect. And one of the things that we do need to do is we need to generate an encryption key on the on the routers, uh, RSA or DSA. Uh, so uh, we're logged on to router two. We're just going to tell it that we want to generate a uh, crypto key. So crypto key uh, generate. Uh, let's just use DSA. It'll uh, ask you basically for uh, what size you want the modulus. I'll just take the default, which is uh, 1024. Um, no big deal. And um, then let me uh, go ahead and do uh, configuration T and um, configure the netconf agent on, on this particular one uh, to be uh, TTY. And then let's go ahead and commit the change. Okay, and hit Control C. And now what we're going to do is uh, to verify the router's netconf agent is running. Um, let's enter the command um, netconf echo format and just see. what information we get back. Okay. Uh, so this is just a verification that uh, this router is able to talk uh, NetConf and it does have some capabilities listed. And this is just one of the ways uh, that you can go ahead and, and verify that. So exit out of that. Uh, so let's use, um, oh, let's look uh, at Telnet, uh, let's look at Router 3, let's see, and let's go ahead and generate a crypto key on this one. And again, just accept the default. Now, instead of uh, doing an echo, let's go ahead and actually use what's called a NetConf browser to go ahead and, and pull the Yang models and uh, see what they look like. This is just, I'm just doing this just to show you uh, kind of the capabilities of Cisco routers with NetConf and, and Yang. And then what we're going to do is actually um, see what can really be done with an OpenSDN controller, how, how uh, powerful it actually is. Uh, so we're uh, basically just launching a NetConf browser, kind of like a web browser, except what it does is it pulls Yang models. It'll take just a second uh, for it to load here. And it looks like it is. And then what we're going to do is basically try to connect um, to router 3. And we're going to accept the key. And it's going to prompt us for a password. And hit OK. And as you can see, it pulled a ton of information. So these are all the capabilities. And if you notice, uh, looks like it uh, knows about CDP and crypto and uh, uh, interface manager and IP domains. Just a ton of information, a lot of different capabilities uh, that this router happens to be aware of. And so all of that information, when this NetConf browser, uh, which is acting 
as a NetConf client basically connected to the Cisco router it was able uh, or I should say it sent a hello to the uh, Cisco router and the, and the Cisco router basically immediately sent back all these Yang models as you can see cisco.com slash ns Yang and it's uh, Yang models for the Cisco iOS XR so it immediately sent back all of these uh, different capabilities uh, which are pretty cool but uh, believe it or not we can actually get a lot cooler than that uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is then go to the next step of, of uh, uh, basically uh, mounting a NetConf device uh, to the controller. So let's go to, um, I think we've done routers 2 and 3, let's go to router 1. And uh, make sure that it has a, a token that's generated, so crypto uh, key generate uh, DSA same thing okay and how we're going to mount uh, the router uh, to the SDN controller is through Postman it uh, seems to work pretty well uh, so we're going to take a let me first go ahead and I guess create a token real quick since it's been a while since I've done that uh, we'll go ahead and copy that I would imagine we'll have to use it but we'll see here uh, we're going to uh, basically uh, post a command and what this command is there's only a, really a couple things uh, that you have to change it's pretty much a copy and paste um, and I got this from uh, open daylight um, is you basically have to change the name of the router which in our case we're going to mount iOS XRV-1 and then uh, the actual IP address, uh, which I'm using the loopback address, uh, 192.168.0.1. And it, it does uh, talk NetConf on port 830. And the username and password is Cisco Cisco. Um, so let's go ahead and see if I can send this. And it's showing uh, no content, so it was processed correctly. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do next is actually get a node list to see if it was connected. Um, so let's go ahead and, and ask it and now it is showing uh, at least according to the controller that it is uh, set up and that it's uh, connected so uh, one of the besides the uh, OpenSDN controller communicating that through the API to the um, uh, Postman uh, client we can actually go to uh, the OpenSDN controller and verify that So let's go ahead and go back to the available APIs and uh, this time instead of looking at the APIs for the controller, let's go ahead and look at uh, the actual mounted resources. And as you can see, uh, we now have an iOS XRV-1 um, router that's been mounted here. So we can go ahead and click into this and this automatically was built when it was connected and it has uh, all of these different uh, APIs. It takes a, a couple seconds for that to occur, but it looks like all of those uh, basically came up. So if you can imagine an application uh, can be written to only talk uh, to the controller, and then the controller learns about all these capabilities uh, just by having it mounted to it, and it gets uh, all of this information. Um, so let's go ahead and, and uh, take an, an example. Let's go ahead and look at um, the interface uh, manager here. And uh, let's look at uh, uh, the interface configurations. Uh, so we'll click into this. And so all of these APIs, like I said, were, were built when it was connected. Um, you can see it has all the, all the different documentation on IPv4, IPv6, basically all the interface uh, information, MTUs, TTLs, uh, point to points. Uh, let's go ahead and, and just uh, click try it out and see what information we get back. So it does give you the URL uh, if you wanted to copy and then use Postman to go ahead and send that, you certainly could. 
uh, what it'll do is it'll basically get back the same information that uh, is being fed to you back here uh, which is it's giving you the interface information uh, this is for iOS XR4 um, that's connected to uh, gigabit ethernet 0001 uh, it's giving you the address uh, the mask and on the second interface is connected to the flat network uh, that's uh, part of uh, viral actually virtual internet routing labor, uh, lab um, has a management ethernet interface and uh, another interface of gigabit 0000 to iOS XRV2 uh, so router 2 and its uh, IP address and subnet mask and then uh, you have the loopback address which is uh, the 192.168.0.1 which uh, obviously we're using that for uh, the BGP uh, router ID so all of this information uh, was learned very quickly just by mounting it to the uh, mounting the router to the controller and then once it's mounted uh, you can imagine uh, you could actually use all of these capabilities very quickly an application could then if it wanted to know something about that router it would know that it could use these APIs to get that information um, so we've mounted it now let's go ahead and see if we can actually delete it uh, so again what we can do is uh, we can go back um, uh, to the openness or I should say to postman and then uh, go ahead and delete uh, iOS XRV1 so this is uh, a lot a lot simpler nothing really in the body it's basically just saying uh, delete and, it, and you basically if you look at the at the URL it's basically just uh, deletes it by the name of the host uh, so let's go ahead and, and hit send um, let's see here saying it's having some problem finding iOS XRV-1 okay and that time it took it so it says 200 okay and to verify that again we can just get a node list and see if it's connected and as you can see it's no longer connected uh, we can go back and see I'm not for sure how quick it updates but we can go back and see um, let's go back to controller resources and then go back to mounted resources okay and as you can see those APIs are gone now so you can no longer uh, use those APIs to interface with a with the device since it's uh, uh, no longer mounted to the controller so that was a, a pretty straightforward example we went ahead and and looked at using uh, an echo command to verify it uh, directly on a router that uh, that the Yang models exist. We use a NetConf browser to connect to a router to go ahead and look at some of the capabilities and some of the Yang models that could be seen. And then obviously when we mounted it to the OpenSDN controller, we could see a lot more information about those APIs and then we we're actually able to use those APIs uh, to pull information. And of course you could do uh, different configurations and things of that nature. In the next lab, Lab 9, we'll be looking at uh, some Python scripting that we can use with the Open Daylight controller uh, to pull different information uh, on networking and, and different things like that or common tasks that you might do. Uh, so we'll follow that up uh, in Lab 9 and look forward to it. Thank you.